In the past, Khmer would refer to stone inscriptions and trying leaves, or slugrat leaves, as methods for record keeping. Both of these techniques are essential sources of information and knowledge for the people of Cambodia. Before the invention of printers, sastra, slagrat, manuscripts were the main source of wisdom, containing lifelong poems, literature, folk tales, and any possible knowledge one could find. Currently, although present-day technology excels significantly, there are still communities that work hard to conserve this traditional culture. To get an in-depth understanding of Sastra Slagrat, Thamai Thamai News Media has the opportunity to meet and interview with Laut Leng, a passionate Slagrat scribe who lives in the village of Samrao, Liang Dai Commune, and Gautom district of Simria province. Hello. To begin with, I first learned to be a slugrat scribe when I was still a monk at 15 years of age. The skill was passed down from the elder generation of monks who had passed away already. And my journey as a scribe was not beautiful and smooth. It demands high commitment because most of my fellow scribes quit it leaving just me and two other scribes continuing this tradition. Being a scribe begins with first learning how to hold the pen properly. Afterward, one needs to learn the ancient or the Sastra alphabet. We must follow the traditional characters, alphabets and numbers accordingly. Scribes would have to raise their knees to keep a better grip of the pen and the wooden support. This position gives the utmost support to minimize exhaustion and allows scribes to write for a longer period of time. On the other hand, the pen can be made from any type of wood, for instance, track wood or Burmese rosewood, as long as it is neither too light nor extremely heavy. It should feel comfortable in your hand, and for additional beautification, you can have your pen decorated with carvings as well. Finally, you will have to install a needle or a thin metal piece inside the pen in order to inscribe. The triang leaf or slagrat leaf are rare to find in Simriap nowadays, as there are hardly any trees growing anymore on the mountain areas. To get the large and healthy leaves, I would have to travel to Pravihir province and purchase them myself. Currently, we are training the Pravihir locals to prepare, extract, and carefully dry the triang leaves. If the palm leaves are not properly taken care of, the quality will degrade. Once the palm leaves reach me, I will process them into the next procedure. Right now, we pay for the locals to prepare this lagrat leaf for us, for traveling to find the leaves can cost a large sum of expenses. If we go with a group of many people, the fees would increase up to 4 or 5 million reals. When I was young, I used to hear from the elders that monks who went to extract the slagrat or triang leaves would wrap the top leaf for about 2 to 4 weeks or even longer. Even though the due date is here, the monk would return to chop the previous wrapped leaves. However, in my case, I did not follow the tradition because of the limited time and resources. I need a large amount of slagrat leaves, and within just 3 to 5 days of my travel time, the wrapping will be time-consuming. 
Moreover, since the trees are rare and difficult to find, I have to pick the thick and larger leaf to come back home with. Then, we would spend additional time separating the leaves from the petiole and dry the leaves. The selected leaf could take about 3 to 4 days to be completely dried. Next, after drying, the leaves will be collected and bound in batches before heating or straightening them again. After the inscribing and cross-checking process, we have to proceed to the next step which is erasing. The term erasing here does not refer to discarding or obsoleting. However, it is a common traditional term shared among selected scribes. Instead of referring to it as coloring like we do today, the scribe would say erasing. Erasing here actually means inking. Black ink or raisin here is applied into the calligraphed imprints so that the letters would appear visible. After erasing or inking the letters, we have to clean off the excessive raisin or ink for it the sastra slagrat to have a clean finishing look. Either bran or fine sands can easily wipe off the extra ink. To obtain black ink or raisin, it began by liquid extraction from a tree called chudil or diprocapus alatus. Only the clear liquid is applicable to mix with soot to get the result of black ink in order to bring alive the letters. After the raisin is applied, the inked slagrat must be dried once again before arranging the correct orders, furnished, and finally tied to become the sastra slagrat for the final manuscript. The purpose of acquiring the sastra changes as time goes on. In the ancient days, as depicted in Buddhist studies, people would purchase the sastra as an offering to monks in return for blessings delivered to their ancestors in the spiritual world. Moreover, the people would present a gift and money to the scribes as well in order to get the sastra ready in time for the spiritual offering. For the past 20 years, I have been teaching and safeguarding this tradition. However, the result is not always fruitful. Some of the students gave up along the way while a few of them continued. I think it is because not everyone understands the valuable meaning behind this culture. Only those who are committed from the bottom of their heart are able to stay in this industry. For this occupation could neither lead a person to extreme wealth or prosperity. It demands dedication and devotion to safeguard this tradition. I have been training monks, laymen, children and teenagers now. Four to five students of mine stayed with me for a long period of time, whereas others had moved on in their lives. Until today, there have been donations made to support the selected community. Donations can be in the form of food or offering for the monks, and money to cover the cost of the selected leaves. For instance, for a period of time, we receive the support of $50 per month to sustain the fees. 
However, it has been suspended after a few months of donation. Lastly, I would like to encourage people, Buddhist believers and monks, to continue supporting and safeguarding this tradition together, especially showing extreme care to the pre-existing slagret that are located all over the country. The original Sastra Slagrat must be carefully taken care of to avoid losses or damages because these original copies are extremely rare and priceless for the next generation. Furthermore, I would like to see more support for this tradition and towards the scribes. Little or small, your donation could abundantly encourage scribes like me, along with the others, to safeguard our Khmer culture in the long run. My name is Lao Lang. I am currently living in the village of Somraung, Liang Dai Commune, Angkotom District of Siem Reap Province, and my telephone number is 0699091070. Cao Mui, Sero Vumpel, Ba Sumakun.